I will not practice Christianity as a religion. Majority of what we practice in this side of the world is religion, not Christianity. Religion is more dangerous than the devil. Christianity is not a religion. It's a relationship with your creator. 1998, I kissed religion goodbye. I kissed religion goodbye. And stepped into kingdom. Because Jesus did not die to give us a religion. Jesus did not die to give you a career as a pastor. He died to restore a kingdom and raise kingdom ambassadors and kingdom citizens. When you practice Christianity as a religion, you are going to be a pawn in the hands of charlatan behind the pulpit. So anybody in suit and tie can just come and talk rubbish. You know, to be a lawyer, you go to school, graduate, go to law school. To be a doctor, you go to school, graduate, go to medical school, do housemanship. But to be a pastor... All you need is to claim that you heard a voice that nobody but you heard. And destinies are in your hand. And you do them anyway. You do them anyhow. All in the name of man of God. When you practice Christianity as a religion, you are going to be a victim of the religious, myopic, unexposed, inexperienced, insecure, traditional, cultural interpretation of scriptures of the people you listen to. So if we come now today and say the television is the devil's box and we have kept the lot and we come 30 years later to say the television is no more the box what of all the people that have been destroyed by the first revelation? Religion. 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 Do you know how many people we lost? By trouser. Hey, you can cover your head. Cover air. You should, a woman should not wear trouser. Do you know how many people the church lost? I will never forget two young teenage girls came to our church in the early parts and they were wearing trousers, wearing trousers. So I called her and said, you can't be wearing trousers to the house of God. Can you be wearing trousers? When you come to church, you don't wear trousers, you dress well. And I didn't know that they were from America. And you know that the way we talk in Nigeria to them, that is bully. Like the Gen Z will say, my mentor help, my mentor help. I didn't know. So, they were just looking at me and the authority and the... See, we're, we're sorry, sir. We're sorry. We're sorry. They were already choking. We're sorry, sir. I, I, I ain't got no... I ain't got no skirts. I only have pants. All I have got pants. I said, what's pants? Pants. <laughs> Trust is called pants in America. Hello? Do you know how many people we lost? Do you know that the church oh, we hold scarf for people that are entering church to give them scarf to cover it? Religion. You can't come to church when you are doing your menstrual cycle. We, we, religion has messed us up. And I did a little bit of that at the early stage of my life. Hello? There are some messages I preach. I thank God it's a day of cassettes. <laughs> you can't find it on social media. I lie, lie. It's the days of cassettes and VHS. If you find those messages, you will summarize our ministry to one sentence. But God. <laughs> ah, I'm the one. You have shown me mercy. You have shown me mercy. You have shown me mercy. So when I see people misbehaving now, the way I talk, the boldness with which I tell you you are a fool, you are stupid, is because I've been foolish before. So I've been in that WhatsApp group before, so I know it when I see it. Religion. And many people, that's what they're still practicing today. Stuck in their way. Religion. <laughs> but you know, the Bible says you cannot put a new wine in old wine skin. You know the amazing thing? When you look at that context in Luke, God showed me a lot of things there. He said you can't put new wine in new wine skin. He said no one having drunk the old immediately desires the new. 
For he says the old is better. And let me tell you something. There are generations I've seen in the last 38 years. There are some people that when Jesus juxtaposing that text with Luke where he turned water to wine. When Jesus came into that party, there was wine. And by the time the wine ran, wine ran out, there are people that still had the old wine in their cup that have not exhausted the old wine. So they are not even aware that wine ran out. They are not even aware that there is a new wine. They are not even aware that the syllabus has changed. They are locked into where they are. And their realities, their reality. Like fishes in an aquarium, they are bound. Celebrating what God has left behind decades ago. I hope you know that Pentecostal has expired. We are now in Pentecostal orthodoxy. But many of us are still doing Pentecostal church, charismatic church. God has moved beyond Pentecostal. He has moved beyond charismatic. God is talking kingdom and taking over spheres and taking over territories. And you're already hearing it in all the messages. We have been locked up in the church for so long, the world is decaying. When we are supposed to take over in politics, I was the PFN chairman in 1998. 1998, long, long. We are saying this thing, they didn't hear. Let's take over politics. Let's take over the mountain. I will repeat it forever. The church needs to go and apologize to Chris Okoche. Go and apologize to people like Chris Okoche that was telling, the, we were pushing this thing. I said, yes! Imagine how old I was, 1998. They would call me to meeting. They would talk to people, myself and Sam. Say, ah, you are turning the church. You are motivational speakers. Turning the church to motivation. Take over in politics. They will not hear. They say it's a dirty game. If it's a dirty game, we should clean it up. Are we not supposed to be the detergent? We left it in the hands of charlatan that have taken root. Now, we are doing prayer meeting. Have you noticed that the church is not doing anything now? Wait till 2026. So we start waking up again with our foolish, strategy-less position. Everybody will start doing prayer meeting. One year to 2027, we begin to prophesy useless prophecy. When the children of the born women have already planned 2027, we enter 2031, 2035, 2039, 2043, it's already planned in 2050. You are not doing anything. I say, well, everybody begin to preach. Everybody begin to prophesy. Let's pray. We are taking over. Just they play. When we are supposed to take over in business, we say, this word is not my own. I'm just passing by. Oh, take the old word and give me Jesus. Now they have taken the old word. They gave you Jesus. You can't pay rent now. When we are supposed to take over in media, acquisition, acquisition is the devil's box. Now we are paying millions to the devil to buy 30 minutes at a time. Hello? Do you know how many people the church lost to the mountain of entertainment? Many musicians, many comedians, many of the secular guys, they were all in church. We see head of one this morning that was a drama that the church lost. Hello? Religion. What's the one thing holding you back from living the life God has called you to? I bet it's fear. Fear that whispers, you're not enough, you can't do it, you'll fail. But what if I told you, God never intended for you to live in fear? In fact, he has given you everything you need to overcome it. Today, we're going to talk about how to break free from the chains of fear and walk in the boldness that God has already placed inside of you. And it all starts with one thing, faith. Let's dive in. Fear is something we all face. It can be paralyzing, overwhelming, and even make us doubt God's promises. But here's what we need to understand. Fear is not from God. 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 7 says, For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Let that sink in for a moment. Fear is not your identity. Power, love, and a sound mind are. Fear doesn't get the final say in your life. God's power does. I know some of you are watching this right now feeling like fear has gripped every area of your life. Fear of failure, fear of rejection, fear of the unknown. But here's the good news. Jesus is greater than your fear. When you feel anxious or afraid, you're not meant to carry that weight alone. In fact, Jesus invites us in. Matthew chapter 11, verse 28. 
Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Fear can weigh you down. It can make you feel like you're carrying a burden too heavy to bear. But God is saying, come to me, give that fear to me and I'll give you peace. When you put your trust in God, you start to realize that he's bigger than your fears. Isaiah chapter 41 verse 10 reminds us, Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you, yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. God is literally promising that you don't have to do it alone. He's holding you up, even when the fear feels overwhelming. What if, instead of focusing on your fears, you started focusing on God's promises? Practical Steps to Overcome Fear So, how do we practically overcome fear in our daily lives? Here are three key steps. Number one, meditate on God's Word. The Bible is full of promises that combat fear. One of my favorites is Joshua chapter 1, verse 9. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous, do not be afraid, do not be discouraged, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Read scriptures like this daily, remind yourself of God's truth, and fear will lose its grip on your heart. Number two, pray boldly. Prayer is not just asking God for things, it's an exchange. When you come to God in prayer, give him your fear and receive his peace. Philippians chapter 4 verses 6 to 7 tells us, do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Number three, take action in faith. Fear tries to freeze you in place, but faith moves you forward. Whatever God is calling you to do, do it despite the fear. That's where real courage comes from. Not the absence of fear, but moving forward, through it with the strength of God by your side. In conclusion, listen, I don't know what fears you're facing right now, but I do know this. God has already given you the power to overcome them. You don't have to live in fear anymore. You can live boldly, confidently, and courageously because God is with you. Remember Romans chapter 8, verse 31. If God is for us, who can be against us? So, don't let fear have the final word in your life. Instead, let faith rise up. Let God's promises lead the way. If this message has touched you, don't keep it to yourself. Share it with someone who needs to hear it. And don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell for more content that will strengthen your walk with Christ. Let's break free from fear together.